Hello fellow artists and welcome to the mobile artisan again. I am Morella and I'm going to be walking you through this llama painting today. So I will go through my supplies here. I have a blank uh, 11 by 14 canvas. I have my small round paintbrush. I have a large flat paintbrush. I have a paint uh, rinse cup with water in it. I really like my old mason jar. I have a solo cup. So we're going to use the top of this to make some circles. I have just some paper towel to use to wipe my brushes off. I have my old paint smock that I have on today because acrylic paint will stain. Uh, parents, you'll also want to put a piece of paper um, or some other kind of covering over your table because acrylic stain, uh, acrylic paint will stain your surfaces. And then I have my paint palette of all my paints today. So I have just a plain black acrylic paint. I have a white acrylic, a light pink, a medium to dark pink. And then for our background color, I have a light kind of blue color. You can really go with any kind of light color that you want for this background, but I like the contrast that comes between these two. You could also go with kind of like a minty kind of green color too, which would be really nice. So again, oh, we're also going to need a pencil. But here's a peek at our painting again. So we've got our llama here with some dark pinks and some light pinks. I'm going to put these fun sunglasses on them too, and I thought the background was appropriate today because I don't know where you're located, but I'm in Michigan and we woke up to snow today. So a little bit of a snowy background for our llama today. And to start off, we're going to kind of look at our painting, our canvas in sections of three. So we've got one, two, three, and if we go about a third of the way down here, this is where the top of our llama's head's going to be. So I'm going to take your pencil and curve uh, do a curved line just across the top of there. So again, that's just the top of his head there. And then we're going to kind of curve back out and then bring that all the way down to the very bottom of the canvas. We're going to match that on this side. Curve it back out and then bring it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. So it kind of looks like one really big thumb there, right? And then we're going to draw our uh, llama's ears in. So I want you to start kind of towards the top there. So if you think about this as a thumb, and here's your fingernail, it's kind of towards the side of your fingernail. And you're going to go up, and then swoop back down to the top of the head. And then we're going to go to this other side and do the same thing. And they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. You can make them a little pointed if you want, uh, whatever your preference is. And then we're going to go into about the middle of the llama here. And we're going to go and draw... Nice big circle in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to cover up most of these lines anyways. And then right in the middle of that circle, I'm going to draw, kind of will end up looking like a smiley face out to the sides of the llama there. And at any point, if you guys feel like I'm going too fast, you can pause your video uh, and catch up to where I am. So we've drawn in most of our llama here, but then we also want to do, it's got kind of this, goatee area. So we're going to just do a little triangle and a triangle. All right. And then we're also going to do just a couple circles for the eyeballs just so we can kind of figure out where we're going to place those at the end. So just a little ways down from your ear, why don't you just do kind of a circle there. And then we'll go to the other side and do another circle. And if you know the size of um, a dime, we're going a bit smaller than a dime, so don't go too big on that. All right, and then that's all we're going to need our pencil for, so you can set that aside until the very end, because so we're going to use that for our signature at the very end. And I want you to take your paint palette here, and we're going to start with this really um, kind of medium, dark, rich pink, and we're going to get our big flat brush, and we're just going to put a little bit of paint on that brush. You don't have to go too crazy with how much paint you put on there. And this is why I like my canvas to lay flat down on a surface rather than up on an easel because if you get too much paint on there, you're not going to have to worry about it dripping down your canvas. So we're going to start with this circle area right in the middle. I want you to take your paint and just fill that whole area in. And 
means you don't have to do too much paint on there. And I want you to cover right up to the edge of those, right over top of those uh, pencil lines that we drew in there. And then we're going to paint in this bottom part. And I want you to go all the way to the edge of the canvas too. So this is this little goatee area. And these are actually going to be his cheeks, even though this looks like a mouth right now. So this is kind of like his neck that we're painting in. Or her. Whatever your, whatever you decide your llama is. Might even be fun to give your llama a name at the end. And again, you can cover right up onto those pencil marks that we made. And then while you still have your paint and your paintbrush, I want you to do some little, short little spots off the side. You can actually use, oh, too much paint. You can actually use your paint kind of as a stamp and just stamp it there if you want. And I'm just giving them some hair or her. All right. And then we're gonna go up and put some pink paint onto the ears. So I want you to get your paint on your brush, this dark pink paint again. And we're gonna find a spot towards the top of the ears and find kind of the middle of it and make that little mark with your paintbrush. And then I want you to find another section here that's towards the middle of the ear and make another mark right there. And we'll do it on the other side. And then we're gonna do that on this side too. And that's just gonna help us figure out where we wanna fill our paint in. So we're gonna fill in the outside of the ear. We're gonna fill in the outside of that ear too. So just go ahead and paint. Put your paint in there, right up to the edge of your paint lines again. So right up to the side of that guy's head. And covering up all our pencil marks. And then we'll go and do the same thing on this side. Now, I don't want you guys to worry too much about having perfect lines or perfect shapes or your shape matching mine exactly because that is the beautiful thing about art. Everybody's pieces are going to look individually their own. Even my piece is going to look different than my first piece. All right, and then we want to have a little bit of hair at the top of this guy's ears. So I want you to do the same thing with your paintbrush. Put just a little bit of paint on it and then we're going to use it kind of as a stamp. Do one, two, three, four. We're going to do that on this side, too. One, two, three, four. See how that makes him look like he's kind of got some fluffy ears. All right, and then we do need to fill in a little bit of his goatee at the bottom here. So if this big paintbrush is uh, difficult, too difficult for you to fill this space in, then you can switch to your small paintbrush. But I just want you to fill in part of that goatee like that. We're just going to leave this little edge just like that and then I want you to rinse your brush off in your cup of water because we're all done with that dark pink for just a moment and then once you rinse your brush off I want you to make sure that you get it nice and dry on your paper towel or a piece of uh, fabric too because so we want to make sure our, our paint doesn't get watered down so I've got my nice clean brush and then we're going to go back to our palette and we're going to go to this light pink this time. And we're going to start where we ended on our last one because I want you to blend that line just a little bit. So we're going to fill in the rest of our goatee here. And we're going to go right up to that pencil line. And then I want you to just take your paintbrush and kind of blend it in with that paint above it. See how that blends in? You don't go too far into it. Don't go all the way into it, otherwise you're going to lose all of your pink. And then once you finish that, we're still going to go with our paintbrush, but I want you to take it and just wipe it off on your paper towel. You don't actually have to put, uh, you don't have to rinse it this time. And then we're going to go back and we're going to get our light pink again. And we're going to fill in this guy. 
and most of his face. The only area I want you to leave alone right here is kind of the space between his eyeballs. So don't quite go all the way up to his eyes. If you do, that's okay. We can always cover up acrylic paint after it dries. I'm going to bring it all the way down to his little, it's going to be his mouth area in here. And all the way around here. bit hard to see on this canvas because it's not a real bright pink. But I like the I like the light pink with this guy. And while we're at it, we're also gonna take our paintbrush, whoop, a little too much paint. And I want you to do some more of those stamps off of your goatee. Just to give him some hair. And then we're gonna do some stamps off of his Chin. So there's one there, one there. We'll do that on this side. So two of those. And then I want to want you to go kind of to the middle of his cheek and do some pointing towards the outside. And then you can do another one in between those. So they end up kind of directing towards the outside of the canvas there. And then we're going to also paint in the top of his head. All the way almost down to the eyes. So see we're leaving this space around the eyes that we're not going to cover right now. And we'll connect this here. And we'll leave just those eyes with some space around them. Then we're going to go up and we're going to finish these ears. And it's okay if you get into that dark pink paint. And if your paint up there isn't dry yet, then you're, let's see, I'll show you. I got some dark pink paint on my brush. You can just wipe your brush off to get a little bit of that paint off if you don't want it to mix too much. And then we're going to do some fuzzy hair going out here. So we're going to put some of the light pink paint on our brush again once you've filled in your ears. And I want you to do some, some hair that gets going off his head and just use your brush as a stamp again. your brush to kind of blend that a little bit too. And then we want to do some of that towards the top. So I'm going to kind of just make an uneven line at the top. And all I did for that was I used my brush kind of at different angles. So you can see there's a little bit of a line up there. It makes it look like he's got some hair coming off the top of his head. And then I want you to wash your paintbrush off again. And this time we're washing it in our water and getting it nice and clean and then drying it off on our piece of paper towel or cloth again. So we've got a nice, a nice clean brush. And then we're going to go to our white here. And I don't actually want you to coat your paintbrush right now. I just want you to dip it in there towards the top of it. And we're going to add in some uh, kind of highlights to the fur. So I just want you to use it as a stamp down here. Like he's got a furry little chin. And we'll add in a couple more. And this paint is probably going to be a little bit wet and so that's why we're just stamping it. We're not dragging our brush through it. And we'll do a couple down here. And then let's do a couple up here too. Go all the way over the, 
over the ear there. And we'll do a couple more up here towards the top of his head. And then we're going to fill in the space around the eyes. And you can actually go over the eyes right here because you're still going to be able to see through your, your paint. And I want you to take your white. Just go over top of that eye. And then you can kind of blend that in to the pink. So see how his eyes just look a little bit highlighted there? Since we added some white over top of that. All right. And then I want you to wash your paintbrush off again. So we're going to switch colors again. And I have to use a whole lot of white there. So I washed my brush off. Got my nice clean flat brush again. And after you rinse it and dry it, I want you to use your fingers to really flatten it out because we're going to use this as a stamp again, but we're using some black this time. So it's a little more important that your brush is uh, nice and has a nice smooth edge to it. So I'm going to take your palette again and we're just going to dip it into the black. With not a whole lot of paint, you can see that there's just a small line on there. And then we're going to start with our little um, nose here. I want you to do a V, if you know your letters, at the top. And then we're going to make turn that into a Y. So we've got a Y right in the middle of this circle area here. And then we're going to do a line out from there and there. And then up. It's got a nice smiley face on our guy here. And then you can set that brush uh, to the side. And we're going to switch to our small brush here. I want you to take that and get a pretty fair amount of black paint on it. And we're going to make his nostrils. So at the top of this kind of Y that we created here, we're going to just use it as a stamp. See? And we've got his nostrils. And then we're also going to take that and put a little more paint on it. And he's got to have a few spots where his whiskers are coming out. So I just want you to take your brush and do some, a couple little dots on there. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're also going to fill in our eyeballs. So you can kind of see these marks underneath the white paint. And I'm just going to fill that in. And if your white paint is still wet, you can still go over top of it. Or you could come back later and add the eyes in if it's just too wet for you. And then we're going to rinse off our small paint paintbrush one more time. And make sure it's nice and dry and nice and clean. And we're going to stick with that small paintbrush. And I just want you to do a dot of the white. We're just going to add a little highlight inside of his eye. And I know that black paint is really wet. So we're not going to move our paintbrush around on those eyes. We're just doing that little dot there. And then I want you to rinse your small paintbrush again. Because now we're going to create our, our glasses. So take your, your cup that you have and take your big fat brush that still has some paint on it. And you're going to get some black paint. And all you're going to do is paint it onto the top of your cup. It's easier this way than trying to dip it into paint because you don't need a puddle the size of the top of your cup for this. Just need a little bit of paint. And once you get that covered, you're going to see where your llama's eyes are and see where the center of his face is. And I want you to line the edge of this cup up with where the center of his face is. So I'm actually going to put my finger here and I'm going to put my cup up against the side and then I'm going to use it as a stamp. And then I need to get more paint on my brush or on the top of my cup because we're going to do the other eyeglass side. Make sure you get the cover or the top of your cup nice and covered. 
and then I'm gonna kind of eyeball this one and just make sure that the bottom of my cup here is about lined up with the same side as my glasses on the other side. And then I'm gonna just push it down there. There we go. And you kind of have to dedicate to where you want to put your sun your eyeglasses because you can't really move the cup around once you decide where you're going to put it. And then we're going to take that paintbrush one more time. And I need to draw the little nose piece here. So as wide as my paintbrush is, I'm just going to find the spot that uh, that will connect with both of the eyeglasses. And I'm just going to use it as a stamp, just like that. And that's all we have to do uh, for the black. So I want you to rinse your paintbrush off because we're going to use this big brush one more time uh, on the llama. So I rinsed it and I'm going to dry it really well. And I want you to go back to... I got more paint on my... Accidentally got some paint on my brush. So once your brush is nice and dry and clean, I want you to do that same thing where we flattened it out before you used your fingers and made it nice and that nice crisp edge. And we're going to use it as a stamp to make the llama's eyebrows. So we got this dark pink. I just want you to dip it in there again. And then right above your llama's eyes, I want you to do stamp one eyebrow and then stamp another eyebrow. I think I'm gonna make his eyebrow just a little bigger. Two. There we go. And then I want you to rinse your brush off again because now we're gonna add in our background color. So your brush is gonna be clean and nice and dry. Then we're gonna go with this light colored blue, or you may have decided on another light color. And then I want you to paint all the way around your llama. So you're going up close to the edge, but you really don't have to worry about filling in right up to the edge. And you know, your eyeglasses are still going to be wet since we just painted those in. And we're painting all through the background, but I don't want you to paint inside of the eyeglasses next to the llama. We're going to leave that alone. If you did already, it's okay. You don't have to fix it. So all the way up around and all the way to the edges. And I hope that you guys, once you've finished yours, you have your parents take some pictures and post it online so everybody can see it. And so that I can see it and see all the fun work that you've done. And if you decided to give your llama a name, I'd love to hear your llama's name. And I'm making sure we go right up to the edge for that funky llama here up on the top. You don't have to worry about painting the sides of the canvas. I found that that just tends to make a mess. So all the way up to the llama here, but you can leave some of that white next to the llama. I like that it kind of, that white paint in there makes it look like some, some more wispy llama here. It's kind of glowing all the way, all the way around. And just blending in a little more. 
getting rid of some of those really big globs of paint that I put on there. And then we're done with our big brush. So I want you to rinse that, rinse that off and dry it off and set that one aside. And then I want you to take your small brush and make sure that's nice and clean and dry. And then we're gonna draw all those snowflakes that I talked about in the beginning. So take your small brush and your white. And we're actually gonna do this kind of as a stamp. So I like to do like some big ones. And it's totally random wherever you want to do these and your background's still going to be wet so if you try and move your brush around it's just going to blend so we're just taking some pretty 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 big globs of paint here and just laying it right over top of our really wet blue background And going all the way around. And this is another reason, or another example, of why I like my canvas laying down. Because if it was up on an easel, all of our little snowflakes would be running right now. We don't want that to be the case. And you can do as many or as few as you want in whatever kind of pattern or randomness that you want. You do a whole lot and it makes it look like he's in a blizzard. And you do just a few and it looks a little more like the snowfall that we hit this morning. And that is it. That's my little llama guy. I don't have a name for him. I'd love to hear your suggestions on what I name my guy. And then the very, very last thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and we're going to sign it. You always have to sign your piece. Be proud of the work that you put in. And I'm going to sign mine in this pink because that's the one portion of my painting that I know is really, really dry. I'm going to just sign my first name. You can sign your first name and last name or last name only, or you could do your initials. You can put on the, on the date if you want however you decide that you want to do it and be proud of it. So that is it. That is all. I appreciate all of you coming today and watching my video. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback and see all your photos and hear what else are, since we're all stuck at home right now. So I hope that you will follow me, The Mobile Artisan. I'm on Facebook and Instagram um, and send me any questions you might have. Thanks and have a good day.